Hi there, this is John from RevSoft, and this presentation is the application of the theory of how RevScheduler works with E1 on all platforms. We worked on this with our North American E1 partners at ERP1, and all the data and jobs we showed are from their AWS Cloud Server instance, so thanks ERP1. Okay, so just in case any of you guys skipped the theory video, here are the seven tasks we want to be able to do within RevScheduler and Enterprise One. Automate the execution of the UBEs, secure the passwords, so no visible passwords anywhere, retrieve some execution data and show it in RevScheduler, only run UBEs when there's data to be processed, so UBEs on demand, expose UBE execution variables within the process so they can be used in other scripts in the same job, read the PDFs created by the UBEs to highlight any issues immediately, and also retrieve PDF data from the UBEs for dashboards, help desk tickets, etc. So as an example, we created a multi-run job to submit the GL post, RO9801, that would start at 6 a.m. and execute every 15 minutes with the last execution at 8 p.m. So it would execute 57 times. Now, we only wanted to submit the GL post if there were approved batches waiting to be processed. Now this single task should cut down the number of GL post UBEs submitted. Then when it did submit the GL post, we wanted to check into the output and see if there was one or more batches had errors in the PDF anywhere. And if there were errors, we wanted to be able to retrieve the batch number, update the dashboard, send out emails, etc. So this was a flow chart here. Basically check and see if there's any approved batches. No, go back and wait for the next process. If there are, run the GeoPost UBE, read the PDF and see if there's any errors. If there are, go through the error processing. If there aren't, go through the good processing and let's go from there. This is what the multi-run part of the definition looks like in Rev Scheduler. Start at 6 a.m. every 15 minutes, end at 8 p.m. Now here's the scripts to perform what was shown in the flow chart. All scripts have sequence numbers and scripts can branch to other script sequence numbers based upon the completion status. Like script sequence 10, if it ends AC or abnormal completion, will branch to 9999. So basically out of here, if there's no batches waiting to be processed. Now also, anything between slash aster and aster slash are comments. They're not executed. They're just a way to allow you to document the whole business process flow in the scripts. Now let's take a look and see what happens when the multi-run job's executing. So any multi-run execution that does not find any batches to be processed via the check fill on the F0011 file looks like this. Sequence five is a comment, sequence 10, abnormal completion, as there are no records, so it branches to 9999, which is out. And all other script sequences show as bypassed execution. The Rev Scheduler log also shows the details. You can see the check PDF being executed and then the fail, zero records detected. Then as the script sequence has completed abnormally, it will branch in this case to 9999, which in this case is out. Okay, we've seen what happens if there's no batches to be processed. What happens? Well, this is a good batch. The RJ check fill has passed as there is one record in F0011. The UBE is then executed and the PDF is read and the one or more batches had errors is not detected. So the RJ retrieve PDF then retrieves a batch number, in this case 13042, and updates a value in the user variable for the last good batch number. The processing here for the bad batch is bypassed to sequence 999 unconditionally after the execution of sequence 60. Okay, we've seen a good batch. What about a bad batch? Okay, the RJ check fill has passed again as there are two records in F0011. The UB is executed and then the PDF is read and the one or more batches had errors is detected. So script sequence 30 ends abnormally and as directed, branches to sequence 95 and bypasses the good batch processing. You can see that script sequences 35 and 60 are not executed at all. The RJ retrieve PDF 
then retrieves the batch number, in this case 13043, and updates in the user variable for the last bad batch number. So now we've run this for a whole day. Let's check the multi-run statistics. The job's executed 57 times. The GL post was submitted six times instead of 57 times. Four times the GL post UBs had no errors, two times the GL post had errors. We've saved 51 submissions of GL post UBEs by using this mechanism. We can also see the details in the multi-run summary form here. 51 times there were no GL post UBEs submitted, only six times. Now, the GL batches that we used in this exercise were created using orchestration processes and are created by the great techos at ERP1. Then those orchestration processes were executed as multi-run jobs in Rev Scheduler using the RJ run orc command to create the required scenarios. Okay, as part of this process, we we're updating the RevView Health Center dashboard. So if we filter on GL, we can see there are two entries, the last bad batch number, last good batch number. So these are the values that were retrieved and placed into the user variable, then posted onto this dashboard. You can see there's also a hyperlink here to allow you to go straight to the GL post PDFs for that batch. So from here, this is the 7th of March, we can look at the history for the good batches. There they are, and there's the 13042 with a link to that PDF file. And the bad batches, we can see here, and we've got the link to the 13043. So as part of this process, we actually emailed the bad batches out with the PDF as an attachment. So in your email subject matter, it had the batch number in there. Again, it's in a user variable. So it's in the subject matter, it's in the body text. And also if you click on the hyperlink here, there it is, 13049, one or more batches had errors. So by using that user variable, you can use it to post on the dashboards, you can open help desk tickets in Remedy, ServiceNow, Tivoli, whichever you like, SolarWinds, we have access to all of those as well as part of RevMessage. So you can, once it's in a user variable, it can be used anywhere. Once again, thanks to our partners at ERP1 for allowing us to use their cloud server. So anyone that's wondering about seeing Rev Schedule on cloud, you've seen it now. Any info you would like, contact us at product underscore info at revsoft.com. Thank you again for your time. Much appreciated.